off. Like, Hello YouTubers, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Really quickly, I want to say thank you to Yvonne for this beautiful scarf she sent me and for the other ones you sent me. They are so beautiful. And for Little Citrus Tree Soaps, wonderful product. If you have a chance to buy her soaps, please do. They are really, really good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we're talking about today a little bit more of what is going on with this couple. And like I've always said, what they are doing is unprecedented. And I also see it as a bigger picture because they are creating this machine, this brand that is really trying to get the the Gen Z's and the, the younger kids that are coming being born now to 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 under to look at them as these global superstars that are out to do all this good, but they perpetrating. I know what's going on. Maybe not those who haven't lived long enough to see when somebody is trying to pull the wool over your eyes can see, but I'm telling you, I can see right through this couple, right through them, that they are trying to plan something long-term that is going to get this younger generation behind them as we're all older now the queen is not going to be around much longer charles is if he ever gets to the throne is not going to be there that long he's certainly not going to be there for 70 years like the queen so you've got the the prince george's coming along that are going to be a part of the monarchy his generation and then you have those in america who don't know nothing about what's going on over in the uk but all they see or eventually will see is this infamous couple and we have to set the tone for what this is now because this could lead off into some serious misleading just propaganda overtaking with this ideology that is very dangerous you know how over the years and generations thinking of the people changes like we have the generation of today with the social media like they think differently than than kids their same age during back in the 40s so it, it all is relevant to what's going on in the world and i see this couple is trying to with their children if they exist to to try some kind of a movement that is has got some some propaganda behind it and trying to use what has happened over in the UK and so, and bring that over to the US of A bring it over here and, and set the tone for a new kind of generation an American that is descended from royalty and we know they ain't got nothing to do with royalty when it comes to what royalty has always been about. I can see them doing that. So it's either we we kind of stop it, get people educated about what is actually happening, because we know just yet again, this whole story with a Prince Harry in this book. And, you know, they fed us all kind of stuff before about what well, we don't want to. We want our privacy, all that nonsense. We knew it was a lie. We knew it was a lie then, but now we see them coming out with a book and it's telling us a completely different picture. And if they get people behind them, if they get the masses that have popularity to fall for the okie doke, or they get younger generations to, to see that they are the new woke people of America, then we got a serious problem. We got a serious problem. Now, I don't know who is of great popularity that is going to be behind them, but it's like until we know what the machine is that could be helping them over here, we got to keep speaking out about it. I don't know. I know, I mean, I know we've had. We've seen Obama with Prince Harry. We've seen Michelle Obama comment on Meghan Markle. Um, we know Elton John and his husband are definitely behind this couple. We got the Clooney's. You know, there's something we got Oprah and Gail, you know, but it's like, 
how far are they going to go to continue to to empower these people? Because, you know, Oprah has to know the lie. She's got to see through this woman, because if she doesn't, then she's really allowing it. She's essentially allowing it. Is that my Mr. Otis? Oh, and I had, <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Sometimes I get comments about like what I do and like, I'm trying to be like certain people. Look, I ain't trying to be like nobody but me. Okay. Get the facts. Look at when I started my channel, this little man here, he's always been there always from the very beginning. So look, I'm being me, I'm doing me, and I ain't trying to be like nobody else. So get your facts straight. Don't let my sister girl come out, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna be talking about what is happening with this whole book thing. And I could go on a rant about a lot of different things, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. Um, oh, and also, what happened with Prince William, his calling out the, the, the racism that had happened during that sports event. Good for him. Good for him. And we need people who have clout and, and who have a following to come out and say things when those things are not okay. It's when you suppress it and you let people speak in such a way that is derogatory towards people of color that people feel emboldened and empowered to continue to do those things. So yeah, I, I applaud him for doing that. Because I can tell you, if had he not done that or people throughout the years don't call out this racist behavior, it flourishes and it becomes more. And unless you are one to be targeted for racist comments, then, you know, you, you should just just say good for him. OK, just say good for him for saying something because it's not right. And I know you guys have already heard about what was said. I'm just giving my two cents about my thoughts on what Prince William said. Good for him. Call out the racism because in society, we have to show that we don't tolerate nonsense. And that's just that's just nonsense as far as I'm concerned. OK. All right, Mr. O.C. Oh, Mr. Otis, you can right fall asleep. I know you're going to start snoring here in a minute. I know you are. Don't look at me like that with those puppy dog eyes. I know you're just going to go over there and go to sleep. Now, this couple has th 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 this is why I knew I'm like, yeah, we're going to we're going to be talking about stuff with this couple because they are just going to do things. They're going to continue doing things because this is so unprecedented at the times that we're living in with this couple. So the queen could withdraw Harry and Meghan's platinum jubilee invitation as insiders reveal growing palace anger over the clearly deliberate timing of Duke's tell all exit memoir that threatens to eclipse her 70, 70th anniversary year. This is so wrong on such another level wrong that I, I, if I had, if I had the ability to, to show up at that house in Montecito where they live, I would and I, I, I put him straight because have you seen the most recent pictures of the queen? Have you seen her? She's not looking well. She is not looking well. And I can imagine she's still grieving from the loss of her husband. And you got this knucklehead grandson go come out and do something like this. Just like this article is saying. This is a deliberate thing that they are doing. It's very deliberate. And you have to wonder why would you do something like this? One, your grandmother. Two, look at what she's, what she's been through with her husband. He just died. And three, look at how, she's, how frail she's looking lately. And that is not an insult to the queen. It's just keeping it real. And then you got stuff like this happening which clearly is going to make things worse. Okay. So Prince Harry was facing anger from the royal households last night as his tell-all book threatens to take the shine off of the Queen's historic platinum jubilee. And this ain't this is this is coming from his wife. And this is why from the very beginning when I called her a skank. 
She is. She really is. Because you know this is coming from her. Harry is not going to be emboldened to do something like this by himself. He ain't going to do it. Okay? So he is, has his wife in his ear and she's like, she's telling him. He's like, okay, that's what we getting ready to do. Uh, honey, H has, we get ready to put out a book and we're going to get a ghost writer. Yeah. We're going to get all the inside secrets from you, honey. Yeah. We're going to get the inside secrets. We're going to put it in the book. And Mr. Harry Windsor, he's like, yes, love. Yes. Okay. Love whatever, whatever you say, <laughs> because that's just how he is. And it's so ironic when he talks about is this book is not going to be about the prince that he was It's going to be the man that he has become. Yeah. The, the whipped man that he has become, you know, he, he forgot some adjectives in there because the man is clearly whipped. He is not being a man by saying he's putting out this book, the whole fact that he is putting out a book and already has secured a publisher tells you that there's no amount of apologizing or saying, Oh, don't, 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 don't get all been out of shape queen or grandma. Ma. This book is only going to have good things. You know, no, a book pub publisher is not going to advance you money to just talk about, Oh, what a great life you had. They are want the details, the salacious details of what it was like. What has happened behind those walls that don't nobody else know about. And he is going to have to bring the duckies. Yeah, he is going to have to bring out some serious details that are salacious to make this book even worth a reading. Because otherwise, he's already talked to Oprah. And didn't they say this was going to be the last thing that they were going to do? They're, this is the last, you know, truth, moment of truth that they wanted to speak out. And then look what we have here. They are not telling you the truth whenever they speak. It is a lie. And the 17 lies that Megan has given, we still going to talk about it. Because it's relevant. Because she's going to continue to tell the lies. OK, so his decision to bring out this memoir, which could deepen the rift that he already has right now with his grandmama, um, he says it's going it's going to be actually coming out the same year as the um, of her jubilee, her moment of 70 years ce celebration coming out is when he is telling everyone that he's going to release this book. Why would you do this? Why? Because you are not representing your family very well. You're airing out all of your dirty laundry. And that American divorcee woman that you married to has clearly been a mistake for you because he is going to regret it. So royal sources are saying that the mail, um, they told the, the Daily Mail that inside Buckingham Palace, other royal households, that there was an increasing sense of anger and frustration not just because he had chosen to write a book, but also over the clearly deliberate timing and publication of it coming out next autumn. And that he's even written, started writing this book over a year ago. Like he's already started putting pen to paper and told nobody. So when he went to go to the unveiling of the statue, he knew that he had already been writing stuff. This is why <laughs> I said you better pat him down because he's probably got recording devices on him. Something that he's going to dredge up in his book later that happened at this unveiling. So it's, it's just the deceit and the ungratefulness of the life that you have been so privileged to live that you have the audacity to do this. And then Oprah to, to know about the lies and not call it out tells me, you know, they're lying, but you're still supporting them. And that is wrong. That is not right to do. But the real root of all of this is the wife, because we know it has come from her. It has definitely come from her because Harry being the most, one of the most beloved Royals to, to all of a sudden, become one of the most not loved tells you something. What most recent event has occurred in this man's life to cause him to not be so loved by the people. And it's that wife. Cause I told y'all the moment she came perpetrating down that aisle in that wedding with that veil and that bright white dress, 
you should have known she was a fraud trying to portray herself as this virgin. Sickening is what it was. Sickening, I tell you. So Prince Harry promises readers an accurate and wholly truthful book written, not as the prince I was born, but as the man I've become. And the only thing that he can really say that could be about his life, like this is the only way that this book would have a meaningful read to it is if he talked about his privilege. Yeah, if he was like, well, yeah, I grew up in a palace. I had nannies and I had servants and just like I could just have any kind of meal cooked up for me at any hour of the day. I was always flying first class private jets. Like if he really got into the nitty gritty of what it was really like to be a prince. That is what people want to hear. We don't want to hear how you feel wronged in your life. Because no amount of being wronged in your life is going to be worth hearing unless you really talk about how maybe your, your mom's death affected you, but how you was able to overcome that because of the gratitude that you have for what you did have in your life. The ungratefulness of this man is what is so irritating to me. It's like you don't have a clue what real life and struggle is about. And to perpetrate your way through that, to, to think that you can write anything that is going to give like cause for people to go, oh, that book on Bruce Harry was really good, man. He, he was just telling us all kind of good stuff about his disadvantage of his life. Like, can you imagine people saying that? People ain't going to say that. They're going to be looking at you like you got some nerve. So having already been written for a year, the prince is set to turn a manuscript, which he promised would be a first hand account of my life. That's accurate and wholly truthful. And by the end of this year, it is set to hit the shelves in 2022. Now, the other thing is this, is that he is going to give a truthful account of his life. And, sh and talk about things with his dad and Camilla and maybe how that affected him. That could be something that might be worth listening to because his mom was tormented because of that whole relationship. And this is why I still believe Prince Charles should not be the next king. And I know there are protocols. I've had people tell me when I've said this before that this is you just can't do that. Well, I know he can do whatever he wants to do and he can do a skip over. <laughs> he can just be like, OK, just skip over me and go to Prince William so that, you know, I don't have to go through no ridicule. And my wife, my beloved Camilla, she don't have to go through it because, you know, people are going to be like, well, shoot, that should have been Diana. They're going to see Camilla and they're going to be like, man, the whole time seeing Camilla with, with Charles as king, people are going to reminisce about Diana. So the royal family are fully focused on making the year a joyous occasion when the queen will become the first British monarch to celebrate 70 years on the throne. But now fear Harry and any bombshell revelations will overshadow it. And it's kind of like even like right now they have the news. They found out when we all found out about the book. And I know, I know the queen was like, <gasps> oh, my. Like, I, I know just a hot flash came over her when she heard that, because I was just like the same way. I was like, what? Unbelievable. You cannot tell me that now all the way up to the preparations to the Jubilee, they're going to have to focus on this nonsense and what is actually in the book. Because now they know that there's going to be details that are going to come out. It's around the time of the celebration. Now, can you imagine what is happening over there with this family at this moment right now with Charles? And at, at this point, I, I'm, I'm just warned. I'm giving a smackdown in this video because I'm just look warning. I'm giving a smackdown because the audacity for you to do this 
Harry, Harry Windsor, the audacity for you to think that you can write a book about your family and people are just going to be like, oh, well, good for you, Harry. <laughs> we always wanted to know what your truth was when you were growing up, becoming a man and not really as a prince, but as becoming a man. What was that like for you? Don't nobody want to know nothing about you becoming a man because you ain't become a man. You done became a whooped man that's going by the things that your wife is telling you. You ain't learned nothing. All you have learned is how to obey a woman that is clearly got got you in her her view to manipulate, to deceive and to corrupt into doing something that is going to benefit her. And he can't see this because he don't have enough life experiences. You know, as much as the royal family tried to get Prince Charles, I mean, uh, Prince Harry to go into the military because he was really behaving like a bad boy. He needed to be straightened out. He needed something that was going to help him learn the ways of the world. They should have taught him about what kind of wife one day you should marry. Because like I said before, they should have taught him that when you get out into the world, don't marry a skank, Harry. Don't marry her because they are out there waiting for you. They are out there salivating, waiting to nab a prince. And you're a prince. So you can't just marry any old woman. You've got to marry a respectable young lady, one that wants to be your wife, who wants to do everything to accommodate you and your needs. A wife who is not going to try to overshadow you or use you, Mr. Harry. These are very important things you need to know. That's keeping it real. That's the kind of training he needed to have before she came into his peripheral. I mean, they should have saw her coming. It was like, okay, now, Miss Harry, that one right there is a skank. We don't want to marry her. You see, look at her background. Okay, she's trying to be celebrity-like. You can help her be more celebrity-like. We don't want to marry her. Like breaking it down, keeping it real, before he even had his eyes on a woman. He was too immature to make a decision about the right kind of woman to marry because of the isolation, the kind of life that he had growing up as a prince, mind you. They didn't have people coming in and, and giving him information about the real people in this world and their motives. Because I can assure you, everything that he is doing with this book it was not his idea. But that woman of his has pumped him up to think, look, Harry, you, you a man now. Look at you. You was a man, Harry. And I'm your woman. Write a book. Yeah, we're going to write a book because you ain't no longer that prince, that sixth and line prince that they said you were. You is the man, Harry, and I'm your woman, and we're going to shoot the stardom. Yeah, it shouldn't be Prince William who was on the throne. It should be you, Prince Harry. Look at the power you have. Look at the power you hold from living in the palace walls. Oh, yeah, Prince Harry, it's you and me now, baby. Let's go ahead and make a book and talk about it, everything that happened in your life, because it is worth money. Oh, yeah. Has Harry H. Let's do this. And he was like, hmm, yes, love. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if I do. You got to keep it real. You got to keep it real. And that is the true reality of Harry's situation. That's where he was failed by his, his family. Because he should have been very well prepared and equipped with the kind of woman that he would have to someday marry. There are things that you don't want to believe that are true, but unless you want to be overcome by the reality of something, you got to open your eyes up to the world. Because that woman, his wife, 
She ain't nothing but a real life Jezebel. I said it. That's right. I said it. Because it is my truth. My truth. The royal now, family are fully focused on making the year a joyous occasion when the queen will become the first British monarch to celebrate 70 years on the throne. But now fear Harry and any bombshell revelations will overshadow it. And, and, and for me personally, I just feel for the queen. I feel like she didn't need this. And when you really put it down to the bare bones of what we're seeing, it all comes down to a woman who wants to be a celebrity on the backs of what she is doing to the, the lives and the reputation of, of both of their families. That, that celebrity and that, I mean, that was part of the reason why I got so disenchanted with celebrity because, you know, to really make it, you gotta, you gotta really play the game. Because so much comes down to getting anything. I mean, you gotta have talent too, but there's a lot of things that you just have to put up with. I mean, just think about all the women that had to go through the things with uh, Harvey Weinstein. You know, and I have my own little things I had to put up with just for the little bit of crazy nonsense acting stuff I've done. So, you know, and, 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 this is just a clear sign and a reminder that she will go, she will do anything to get what she wants. Even if it means treating the, the, the queen in this way, overstepping the boundaries and overshadowing all of the years of hard work that this woman has put in and sacrifice as the head of the monarch. And what she's playing on is the history of this monarch and uh, the racism and trying to make it sound like, you know, they're the bad guys. Look at what they've done. And she's racist. The whole family's racist. So we need to be applauded for being good people and exposing all of these things. At the end of the day, they are a family. And you do not do this to your family. But look at what she does to her own family. Look what she's done to her dad. The one that essentially took care of her. So it's just, it's, it's just really so not right. It's so wrong. Okay, so some insiders um, last night were even predicting that the Queen's invitation for Harry and Meghan and their children to join the royal on the balcony at Buckingham Palace to mark her milestone next June could be rescinded. And let me tell you something, it better be rescinded. We better not see them on the balcony next year. Oh no, mm -mm. that can't happen now. Not with you already having something in the works to talk about the life that you have behind these palace walls. No one's tolerating that. Don't nobody want to hear anything or see you, Mr. Windsor, like you have done it now. <laughs> you have essentially cut your own head off because your butt's going to stay in America now. <laughs> you just better consider yourself an American because you ain't going back to the UK not after this nonsense. They cutting you off. You is an American. Go get your passport. Go get rid of your citizenship. Get rid of being a, a prince. Get rid of your dukedom and all of that. Just go ahead and become a real average Joe Schmo American. Get your accent on, right? So you can kind of fit in with everybody because you done. You are done. Now, one said her majesty has been at great pains to try to keep her relationship with her grandson and his family separate from the decisions that she needs to make professionally, um, so to speak. I like how they put that in there, so to speak. I didn't know that you could put that in writing like that. Okay. Squirrel. Okay. Uh, and the invitation for them to join her next year was a genuine one. Yeah, I'm sure before this book thing came out, he was like, okay, yeah, y'all can come. Y'all get on my nerves, but y'all can come. But then she heard this news about the book. He's like, uh-uh, y'all ain't coming now. Mm-mm. I don't know. However the queen says it, she's saying it. She's saying, no, y'all ain't coming now. I can assure you. 
Now, although things have been very difficult, there was a small but enduring hope that enough time would have elapsed for uh, things to heal. But the feeling internally now is that this book will be the last straw. Yes, it is the last straw. It is emerged that Harry has been secretly working on it for some time and he has made clear that he and his ghostwriter, journalist and novelist J.R. Moringer will leave no stone unturned. Mm, mm, mm. They done made it clear, ain't no stone unturned. So you know we're going to have Camilla in there. We're going to have Charles and his cheating butt. We're going to have uh, the stuff that perhaps his mom did, her real true love, which was has not, not Dodie. Um, maybe his thoughts about the crash, his mom's passing, like there's going to be all kinds of things in there that the Royal family is going in until this book comes out. They're going to be like, Oh my goodness. What's he going to say? <laughs> was Harry at that meeting when I talked about that? Was Harry here when I talked about that? Like they're going to seriously be recollection, recollecting behind the scenes about like what kind of things does Harry know? Because we know what's going in the book. He is not going to be uh, let into the, the behind the walls of anything. Because anybody that is in the royal family as a worker, a household worker, that comes out with anything about their life in the royal family, they are blackballed. You are cut off, okay? You are cut off for good, like forever, ever. And that's what has to happen to Harry. So y'all need to just go get him prepared to be the real Harry that he needs to be now. And the real Harry that he needs to be now is American. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm predicting. He's going to be an American. He's going to lose his British accent. He's going to learn the ways of the Americans. And he's going to definitely be that Hollywood type American. Right? So he's going to have a completely different life. Because he is never, he is never ever going to end up back over in the UK perpetrating like he's still a prince because he is going to be on the outs. He is. I can assure you, because like I've always said, this is unprecedented and they should have warned. They should have been warned. They should have known that something like this was going to happen on the day of the wedding. The day of the wedding with that white dress and that veil and that long train perpetrating down the aisle as a virgin princess coming to meet her prince. It was on that day, y'all. The signs have been there all along. And I see the biggest problem is, is he just didn't get he didn't have enough education prior to meeting the right one. They didn't go deep in on him about what kind of woman to marry because who you marry matters. It matters. So before they get whipped, before they can be to the place of no return, you got to set it into their head that you got to marry a certain kind of woman. And on the contrary to that, they could have been like, now you can meet a nice young uh, black woman, Harry. You can meet her, but she's got to have good character. As a matter of fact, Harry, we want you to marry a woman of color, but it's got to be the right one. So this mistake that happened on this wedding day is going to continue to haunt this family, the royal family, until Harry is uh, completely no longer a threat and he will continue to be a threat as long as he is still attached to this royal family he needs to be cut off like cut him off give him a smack down do what you gotta do make it hurt make him feel it make him understand that enough is enough is enough is enough but remain dignified while you're doing it <laughs> dignified still respectable in a respectable way but make them feel it make them feel it because kids act like this when they ain't had enough of a smackdown they feel they act like this when they don't have enough consequences meeting the bad behavior and actions 
That's what this is. Not enough consequences have met his bad behavior. So you continue to be bad and be bad. Or, you know, do y'all say bad? No, that's mad. Okay, yeah, bad. But here's the other thing also. Is he could have easily have not done this had the royal family put their foot down a year ago before he started writing the book. Because I see it like this. He started writing this book when he got away with one thing and then he got away with another thing. And then he was like, oh, they didn't do nothing about that. Okay, shoot. I'm going to write a book now. Like, you know, <laughs> and you know, here we go. And Megan's in his ear. Yeah, we're going to write a book, huh? Come on, let's keep it going. Let's, what we going to say? What we going to say? You know, like they, they really just didn't have enough consequences meeting their bad behavior. And this is what you get. You get somebody writing a tell-all book. I'm going to give you some nonsense about what well, this is when I was, when I was, a, when I was a prince, this ain't a book about when I was a prince. This is a book about when I became a man, mm -hmm. a whipped man. You ain't become a real man, not a real man. Mm -mm. No, we got to talk about this some more. Okay. Peace and love. Bye-bye.